All right, guys, if you can't tell, we're at Jay's house. And uh, we're not in the city anymore. We are in the country. And uh, this is the second part of the trophy room walkthroughs that we're doing uh, with all the boys here at Seek One. And Jay's got a pretty awesome trophy room. If you missed the first part, be sure to go check that out. We announced our big giveaway that we're doing for this year's uh, season. And um, that's a big one. So be sure to check out that last video. But with that being said, I'm gonna go knock on Jay's door and uh, go check out his trophy room. What's up, brother? Welcome to my trophy room. Well, who we have here? Prim dog, you better say hello. Prim, who is that? Who is that? That's Uncle Lee. <laughs> So guys, here's where my trophy room starts. And it's kind of different in my house. My wife, when we first got married, she was like, there are gonna be no animals in the main part of the house. You can forget it, it's not gonna happen. So I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. Cause my whole life I've had animals everywhere when you walk in the living room. So not until we got back from Africa that I convinced her that we could actually put some. And she brought it up. She was like, you know what? I think I'd like to have that in there. And it's probably cause she killed them. So. We are uh, in the main living room. This is our main living room upstairs. I'm on, a, I'm on an unfinished basement, which is where everything else got stashed. So we'll get out of there in just a minute. But uh, we started with some animals that we killed in Africa. Uh, that's a red lech way that I filmed a uh, 52 yard bow shot on. It's pretty cool. Awesome animal. Probably one of my favorite hunts ever up in the mountains in uh, South Africa. And then um, we've got a white blessed buck that my wife killed. A uh, small little diker up here on the top of the entertainment center. An impala, which was maybe my first bow kill in Africa. Um, freaking awesome hunt. There's no way to describe it unless you actually show up and go. And then we got a bush buck. This is a really nice bush buck. And that's pretty much all we got for up here until we... Oh yeah, wife's alligator. Can't, you can't <laughs> leave that out. So this is Kyla's first alligator that she killed, and she actually killed him with her Hoyt bow uh, down in Savannah. And we got a skull put up here so she can brag. Got to, got to keep those animals in here. And uh, then, you know, we just didn't want too much. We do have a turkey, which is actually part of my Grand Slam downstairs that she put up there by herself because she needed something to fill the hole with. So my Grand Slam is disoriented downstairs, but you know, that's part of it. Everything else got shoved down here, so let's go take a look. All right, so like I said, everything's kind of unfinished except for the trophy room because I had to have room to hang it. And here we go. This is my little piece of man cave paradise. When I get in trouble, I go downstairs to my big screen, to my couch, to my bed. <laughs> All right, so I'll give you guys a quick walkthrough, kind of what we just showed you here. And uh, we'll start with this raggedy old bunch of feathers that my uncle mounted for me. This was my very first turkey. So this is very sentimental. And a lot of you guys, if you didn't catch that episode, there is a short clip on our, on our channel of this bird getting killed. So uh, if you see that, there's a lot of vintage footage. Uh, Thomas, Drew and Thomas put it together and it turned out just phenomenal. But that's actually that bird. I didn't that, even know that. That my uncle mounted for me. Cool. So yeah, and that's why it looks all raggedy, but I, he's all there, he's intact. And I still have him. So that's my gateway into my trophy room. <laughs> and then uh, if we roll on around real quick, uh, this is my wife's first nice bow buck that she killed by herself uh, in the suburbs in Atlanta. Called me up and said, uh, she was hysterical. And uh, he's ended up killing this nice deer here. And then uh, we're all on around, man. Uh, we got Georgia, 162. Uh, I think that was actually Gwinnett County. 
and I, you guys, where I grew up at, real quick, I'll say this. Uh, I didn't grow up around big deer. I'm from McDuffie County, Georgia. Any of you can do the research. There's not a whole lot of big deer there. So 100 inch deer is a giant. And I didn't kill my first Pope and Young deer until 2004 in Pike County, Illinois. And this is him. He's a 155 public land giant. Uh, you guys know who this is. <laughs> this is my no-name deer, but he's got a new name, and it's called the state record. So there's your name from a deer. Everybody's uh, like, what do you name him? What do you name him? I'm like, state record? Is that we, good? Yeah, we want to hear the story about this deer because the funny background of this deer is that we were both hunting this deer. This is my first year, the year you killed this deer, my first year, and Drew's first year hunting in That's the right. suburbs. That's right. And we killed, you killed this deer maybe 500 yards from where drew and i had our first spot yeah maybe not even 500 yards yeah <laughs> undisclosed location of course <laughs> but uh yeah guys this is this is kind of what set my world on fire for suburban hunting um i knew i knew bigger deer existed in these areas and like i said from mcduffie county i came up and i actually had uh seen some nice deer and i started working for a company that was allowing me to go around and check stuff out long story short i got permission in september or early october to hunt this piece of property because i saw some rubs and some scrapes and stuff and i was like oh this is kind of cool but where in the world am i going to sit like there's nowhere to sit guys i'm used to like big land and this was like three acres okay so i'm like i don't know how i'm supposed to do this but uh lo and behold november 20th this guy right here was chasing a doe with four other bucks and the story's out it's written in several articles about it but he was chasing and i did a spot and stalk to cut cut it short 47 yards shot him with my hoyt bow smoked him and the deer fell like 10 yards from me it was just phenomenal and i all i could tell you was i just killed a deer that would probably break 180 inches and at the time the record was 173 that was set in like 1973 that's how i remember that and uh anyway i crushed what it he, what did he end up scoring so so he grossed him at 234 and 7 eighths official and he netted 213 and 4 eighths in the book so and that yes, the, you do get deductions on non-typicals, guys. But that is the current standing Georgia non-typical state record archery buck. That is him right here, non-typical archery state record right there, at two thirteen and four eights. And as if anybody knows better, Lee Ellis knows that it is extremely hard to get to two hundred inches. You can kill an absolute moose of a looking deer, and you, it'd be blown away at. But we just got it. We got the length. We got all, I mean, all of this just did it. He's 20 inches inside. You can't even tell. But he's 20 and 5 eighths inside with double drops. So, yep. Maybe he'll hold up for a while. If I can keep this Yahoo off of me. Because he's playing <laughs> hot pursuit. Um, this deer may be recognizable. He was one of our uh, deer that we killed. Drew and I hunted this deer pretty hard on a season that was just crazy. None of us could kill a deer. And I think I killed him December 13th. And that was just a year that just really um, helped take us back and just realize like, wait a minute, we need to slow this pace down a little bit and give more glory to God. And we started changing things around and this deer kind of led that. And uh, after that, man, they started just falling. Um, this was a deer that was actually, we filmed also, that we thought was a deer called Tops, but he ended up being another deer that does not have a name because he showed up at the wrong place at the wrong time with me behind the bow. And Drew had awesome footage of this deer coming in. I actually had a guy kick me out uh, right after I killed that deer. His little dog came in and messed around my scrape and then some some dude came in and just, I don't know, man, it was just terrible. I had uh, the owner's boyfriend is what it was, found out that I was hunting there and he's like, nope, not gonna work. Uh, super wide eight pointer right here I killed with my recurve. This is my best recurve deer, uh, 123 inches. Yes, he's short. I think he netted like 118, so he's still a real short Pope and Young. That's just something I'm going to work on one day is kill a Pope and Young with a recurve. So, but he's a recurve deer. This was, I got some more recurve deer on the ground. This was actually my first recurve deer that I killed. And y'all, these deer like this, they don't look like much, but I'm gonna tell you something. That deer right there had me four fired up more than almost any deer in this room to just kill him with my recurve by myself, called him in, uh, the last morning of, I don't forgot what year it was, but it, I actually killed him January 31st. And uh, that deer meant the world to me right there. That was a boo-boo deer, which don't, y'all whatever y'all do, don't ask Kendall about the deer that are skull mounted on the ground. Uh, just don't ask Kendall about that. No, sure. We just, in fact, just, just stay on the wall. 
So anyway, <laughs> this was my um, second Illinois deer. Y'all, I have three official Boone and Crockett's that I killed with my bow and arrow. The state record that you guys just saw, this is a 175 inch deer that I killed on public land with my dad in 2005 in Illinois. Absolute tank of a deer. I know you can't tell because you're through the camera, but I mean, these deer, this deer was 290 pounds. I mean, an absolute monster of a deer. Um, and then we got another deer I stole from Kendall. He, he actually named him Jim Beam because of his long main beams, big 10 pointer. That was a mid forties deer. The, so that was 175. Then we go up here to, we got T-Bone up here. I stole that one from another friend of mine. <laughs> and I, I actually called Kendall on the phone while this deer was standing in a scrape. And I was like, I got T-Bone at like 15 yards. What should I do? He was like, what? Shoot him. And I was like, oh, okay, well, don't ask Jay Maxwell to shoot something. I mean, I was like, hold on. Literally put my phone in my lap, pulled it back, smoked him, picked up the camera, said, he's dead. He was like, I heard it, I heard it. Yeah, that's T-Bone, 148 inch non-typical. Beautiful deer. Would love to have seen him another year, but like I said, do not tell me to shoot a freaking deer. I'll kill him. Another 147 inch mainframe eight that I killed out of Georgia. Um, and we'll just, I got, by the way, I do have my Grand Slam down here uh, in these raw. This is my first Grand Slam kill with the bow and arrow. The other bird is upstairs, you guys might have seen, but the rest of them are down here. All bow kills. Then, one of my pride and glories right here, my 300-inch, six-by-six, Colorado public land bull. My third year hunting him, I had close encounters, could have killed some small bulls, but Kendall and I spent some time together, and we found the bull, we found the elk four days into the hunt. I killed this 300-incher, and we spent the next 24 hours packing the dang thing out, at least that's what I felt like. It was awful. This this bird right here is an absolute giant. You guys can't tell, but he, this was one of my bigger birds that I killed. It was an inch and nine sixteenths uh, spurs on him. Loveman three sixteenths beard. I killed him while I was at college at Valdosta State University uh, floating down a river. Tell me about that. That is the largest snook that I ever, ever caught. And most of you guys don't know, but one of my first jobs out of college, I didn't know what I wanted to do. Uh, I was a marketing major. I was like, I don't really want to like go into marketing didn't know exactly what that entailed back then. Yeah, she's getting mad at me too. <laughs> God, you should have went into marketing. But I became a saltwater fishing captain. Um, I moved to the beach and I guided fishing for three years. I went and got my license and guided. And Jupiter, Florida is one of the first places that I guided. And I would go down there and guide snook fishing uh, for two weeks out of the year and fell in love with it. And that was one of my first big snook on a light tackle spinning rod. It's a 30 pounder. I mean, 40 over 40 inches, just a giant. So I love saltwater fishing. I mean, saltwater runs through my veins. So I just, uh, I had to mount one and put it up there. And we're back to Africa, you guys. I couldn't, couldn't fit everything upstairs, but this, this is a kudu that I killed on my 38th birthday, which is in July. July 10th is my birthday. And most of you are like, you killed an animal in July, but yes. Winter time in Africa is during the summer here. So July 10th, when I was 38 years old, my wife sitting beside me, last 10 minutes, I shot this kudu bull with my bow at 38 yards, and it was a moment that I'll never forget. It was kind of a sentimental ordeal with us. We broke down. It was just, just everything just came together. It was just so awesome. And these animals got tied into it as well. Kyla killed this water buck. This, this is called a water buck. It's a ginormous animal, and it's it a pretty funny story. I can't go into it all, but... We thought that we thought this was actually like a hundred pound, 140 pound animal. And when she shot it, it ended up being like 800 pounds. So we were a little bit off when he was coming into the water hole, but she killed him. I went back to Africa for a second trip and I really wanted to kill a blue wildebeest. So there's a blue wildebeest. I do have some footage of that. Uh, zipping an arrow through him. That was pretty awesome. This was a sentimental hunt. It was filmed also. Um, this is, um, uh, uh, I forgot what you call it. Inyala. This is an Inyala. And it's kind of in the Kudu family. That was a spot and stalk. Uh, we had watched this bull off the top of a mountain. And I stalked him and ended up shooting him in the chest after a standoff for like 45 minutes. Almost passed out after the air hit him right in the chest. Blood just poof, everywhere. And I just fell out on the ground. I won't never forget it. Just the relief. And I, I broke down on this one, man. This was a sentimental hunt uh, where he fell at. It was just crazy. Um, but... 
Africa is something to see if you can ever have the chance to go. It's just truly amazing. My third Boone and Crockett right here. Everybody said after I killed the state record, they were like, man, you're never going to kill a deer that big again. And I'm like, man, you never know. I mean, I didn't expect to kill this one. But guys, this deer right here has 13-inch twos. He is a typical 192 and 5 eighths and went in the book at 175 and 4 eighths or something like that. I got an article right here behind him. It was, uh, what, 175 and 6 eighths is what he netted. But public land, Illinois, absolute giant, called him in. Never would have killed this deer if I hadn't called him in or called to him. So, so the giant, and then uh, stole another deer from Kendall. Kendall's been so good to me. I'm just realizing that. Like You owe him a beer, too. I stole so many deer from his <laughs> property that he has. This is Bert, a deer that we had on our radar that disappeared early season, showed up late season. First time we saw him, didn't have him on camera at all. Rolls by me, smoked him. Um, early season, big eight from Georgia. Uh, another jacked up deer from the Atlanta area. Another one that I probably shouldn't have shot, but guys, look here, man. I told y'all, I, I started hunting in a place that just didn't have big deer. And I'm telling you something, when a 140 inch deer rolls by you, and you got your bow in your hand, I'm gonna let the air out of him. I didn't grow up like this guy right here, mm -hmm. starting off with a Boone and Crockett. <laughs> so yeah, um, this bottom deer, this this is another very sentimental deer. Um, this is my wife's largest bow kill, uh, largest largest kill ever. I um, mean, she did it by herself. Drove herself to the property, climbed up in the stand. We worked this deer for months, and she pulled it off by herself. And it was 134 inch, uh, I don't uh, 11 pointer, I think is what he is, mainframe eight. But uh, yeah, Kyla did it again. And then of course, my daughter's first deer. Yes, this is a button buck that I almost put in a shoe box to give her to her for Christmas. But he is he is mounted there. And my and she's seven years old when she killed him. She's now 11. And you guys have seen Jaden. He's 14 years old now. He killed this three pointer when he was five years old with a 300 blackout in a food plot, standing next to like a 100 inch eight pointer. And I didn't even tell him the eight pointer was there because we were so locked down on this three pointer, but he made a perfect shot. And my daughter's first turkey. And that's pretty pretty much it. Uh, Jaden didn't get his turkey spot. He's killed a bunch of them though. Uh, oh, la the, the, the rack tree. Like I said, th this tree has, I could tell you story. There's 40 deer racks on this tree. Most of them are anywhere from 70 inches all the way up to, I don't know, probably 110 inches. 100, no, I'm better than that. Maybe 120. I killed every single one of these deer with my bow and arrow, as did everything in this entire trophy room. This is all bow and arrow, except for the snook and the ducks on the wall. But um, this tree right here represents where I grew up at in Thompson, Georgia. Not all these deer came from Thompson, but I'm going to tell you, you take a deer like this, and you see that in Thompson on a persimmon tree coming to you, and you pretty much flip out and i mean lee's probably looking at me like i'm crazy right now but i'm telling you y'all these are the kind of deer that you rode around in the back of the truck for three days with bags of ice all over them i mean this is something to brag about and i've literally got 40 racks on this tree right here that uh my granddad made this tree before he passed away and i just take the racks now and hang them on it because they mean so much but i have a story for every single one of these and uh they just mean the world to me so i just try to you know it's hard it's getting harder as we get older to mount a lot of these animals. Um, I've got two at the taxidermist right now and I, I made a promise to myself. I was like, I'm not gonna mount anything unless it's a white tail 140 inches or better. Well, last year I killed two more, like 144 and a 145 and I'm like, I guess I have to mount them. But literally, you, pictures are really nice because it costs a whole lot of money to mount stuff. And when I'm gone, I have no idea what's gonna happen here. I think there's gonna be a big auction at my house probably the day after I die from my wife. As long as nobody gets the dog, I'm happy. We got one more artifact that's hanging in my trophy room because I absolutely loved where this rope was used at. This is the official rope that was used to lasso Lee Ellis and make him face plant. That's the rope? This, I got it. <laughs> I think we still I have, didn't tell you I got it. We have that clip in here. But I think let's play it right let's now. Let's play that clip right now. <laughs> Oh. If I would have pulled it, you would have, you would have had it. Yeah, yeah, I had both feet in that trap. Uh huh. Whatever. I'm good. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh God. 
It would have turned you a flip if I'd have pulled it tight. That's up for two. I don't want you to eat dirt. That's up for two. I want him to eat dirt. Go okay. and snatch it now. I want to see start. him fall down. He's caught this time. That's over two. All right. Brace yourself. I'm good. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, yeah. There it was. <laughs> yeah.